And once we're willing to start showing up for ourselves, like we, you know, when I, I have people saying it to me when they're doing emotional work, oh, gee, you know, I'm so tired of all this emotional shit. It's such hard work. When does it end? I feel like I've been doing it all my life. And I say to them, well, when does physical self-care end? You know, you're going to have to probably clean your teeth every day. You're probably going to have to have a shower or you'll stink every day. And the older you get, the more you have to monitor self-care every day. And emotional stuff doesn't change. You've got to show up for yourself every day. If you want to have, you know, there's a beautiful saying, love like bread needs to be made fresh each day. You know, and we've got to show up for ourselves every day. And only when we fill up our heart's tank do we have anything in the tank to give anybody else. And if we don't show up for ourselves, can't give away what you haven't got. You'll just martyr yourself and get resentful that people want want from you because you're not, you know, you haven't got enough, you're not giving to yourself. So in the absence of having an extended biological family around me that I can that I have a long history with, when I got clean and sober and I started to write, um, write about my truth. I was called a liar and a fraud and I want to talk a little bit about lies especially in families and, and you know you often found probably you've got friends that maybe a, a relationship is broken up and you're friends with both parties and one person will tell you one side of the story and the other person tells you the other side and they're almost conflicting and you think well who's lying here but you know both people and you know no one's lying and the, the reality is conflicting stories can both be true <coughs> and I love the fable a wise male elder told me when I was first being called a, a, a liar by some of the members of my biological tribe and I was devastated you know because I was working with my therapist saying you know am I a liar am I a psychopathic liar because if I am just tell me because I'd rather be a liar than have them hate me if I'm a liar I'll own it but it, you know and he, he said to me you know Cynthia psychopathic liars for a start don't ask themselves if they're liars and you know what's gone on in your family with, with years of secrecy addiction incest and violence those things can only survive in pretense and in lies and in denial. And we just have to look at anyone that comes out, you know, look at the Rolf Harris case, you know. Of course, when people come out against a person or an institution that's been set up to keep up appearances, and usually the external experiences in very dysfunctional homes are really functional because that's where the dysfunction hides. And... I know when that um, Australian uh, TV series, Hey Dad, you know, all of that was coming out and, you know, people were just called lies. The people that were telling the truth were called lies because where other people sat in that scenario, some people didn't see it, some people did, but nobody wanted to upset the image. And this happens in biological families as well. There's a beautiful fable about a man that had arguing children and that had five children and he blindfolds them all and takes them into a jungle. None, none of them have ever seen an elephant. They don't, they've never seen a picture of an elephant. They don't know what an elephant looks like. They take him out to the jungle and he blindfolds them all and he, they, they're they not allowed to speak. He puts one on the top of the elephant, elephant's back, one near its ear, one near its trunk, one near its tail and one um, underneath it. And all of them had to remain silent and just feel their parts of the elephant. He kept them blindfolded and then took them back home and they had to sit there and listen to each other about their experience of the elephant and of course one child would be talking about the child on top how it was big and flat like the earth like a stone and the, then the other child would interrupt and go no 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 the child that was at the trunk was going no it's wet it's like a hose and the other child would go no no you're lying it's not the child at the tail was going it was like a rope it's a skinny thing like a rat and the other child's going no no you're lying it was like a tree it was at their trunk and, and, and you can see where this is going all of those children where they were sitting in the elephant are telling the truth and calling the others liars because where they sat was their truth. But where the others sat true was their truth. But they're both right. And for me, when I came out and wrote my truth in my biological family about where I sat, and you often find, you know, in a family where you've got a firstborn, sometimes the hero child, and the middle child, which is usually often the scapegoat, and then the third child, which can sometimes be the lost child. But, you know, it doesn't matter how many kids in the family, where each child sits, they often have a different view of what went on. They saw mother and father, which are both elephants in the room, from very different angles. And for me, where I sat, when I told my truth, a lot of people in my biological tribe said, but she's lying. 
the, the saving grace for my sanity was I had other elders in the, the tribe that weren't in the hub but on the out, outer that actually read my book and said, oh, my God, I am so sorry. I knew something was going on and I now get it and I'm sorry I wasn't there for you because they were far enough away from the elephant to see the whole picture. But when you're in, in dysfunction, sometimes it's very hard to honour the other person that sees it from a very different viewpoint. So just remember that next time you're calling somebody a liar that is just seeing the same situation from a very different vantage point.